Legislative Update by Alec Libin. Three photos grace the two pages of this section of the bulletin. The first is a thumbnail photo of a Alec Libin, a younger-looking man. The image is a shoulder-length frontal view against a dark brick background. He is wearing the usual dark blue BVA collared shirt with the logo over the left front pocket. His expression consists of a faint smile. There is no accompanying caption. The second photo reveals four formally dressed individuals standing side by side behind a large wreath. The wreath contains a ribbon that extends from top to bottom and reads, Blinded Veterans Association, moving downward vertically. On both sides of the group are other wreaths, and behind the four are trees and other vegetation. The caption states, The VA Guided Veterans Day. National Committee assists in the annual planning of National Veterans Day celebrations at Arlington Cemetery and in other locations throughout the country. As an original committee member, and by virtue of its congressional charter, BVA enjoys a significant presence at such events. Pictured here near the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier wreath laying, Alec Libin, far right, joins, left to right, Don Overton, Duane Driscoll, and Meredith Buono de Grossa. The third and final photo displays the seating area of a large outdoor meeting place. The image aims to capture the platform stage at the front. Therefore, the photo was taken behind the backs of almost the entire audience as they look toward the stage. In the photo, there are no people yet on the stage, but the seating area in front of it, and throughout the structure appears nearly full. The caption reads, A sun-drenched Veterans Day morning at Arlington National Cemetery brought a capacity crowd of nearly 5,000 veterans, their family members, VA officials, and leaders of veteran service organizations to its memorial amphitheater. The update is expressed by the following. The last few months have been very productive on a chief legislative goal of ours, that of congressional action on the establishment of a federal advisory committee to work with the Department of Veterans Affairs, VA. Senators Bob Casey, DPA, and Rick Scott, RFL, have introduced S-2516, the Veterans Accessibility Act of 2023. Passage of S-2516 would establish just such a committee. Those who have kept abreast of recent developments know that VA has had trouble implementing Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, ensuring equal access for the blind and visually impaired. VA has failed to adhere to not only Section 508, but also to Sections 501 and 504 of the Americans with Disabilities Act, the 21st Century Integrated Digital Experience Act, the Plain Writing Act, and other federal laws and regulations. These shortcomings have harmed not only those who use VA services, but VA employees as well. For too long, VA has been unable to adequately address the needs of the disabled community, resulting in missed appointments, delayed care, and inability to access resources. A federal advisory committee would work to resolve this long-standing problem through the creation of a mechanism with stakeholders who know where the problem lies and the authority to gain VA's attention whenever justified. The committee proposed in the legislation would be comprised of 19 members, 15 of whom could vote. Of the 15 voting members, four would be veterans who are mobility impaired, hearing disabled, visually disabled, and cognitively disabled. Four would be recognized authorities in disability access from law firms, academic institutions, and organizations that advocate for the disabled. Two would be VA employees, one from the VA Section 508 office, and the other from the Architectural Accessibility Program. The remaining five would be nominated by Veteran Service Organizations, VSOs, that advocate for veterans with disabilities. The non-voting members would be the Undersecretary for Health, the Undersecretary for Benefits, the Undersecretary for Memorial Affairs, and the Chairperson of the Architectural and Transportation Barriers Compliance Board. All members would serve a two-year term and would meet every six months to select the chairperson. The VA secretary would have to consult with and be advised by the committee on the improvements. This would include accessibility of information, VA benefits, and buildings, including the Veterans Community Care Program and the acquisitions process to ensure that new products are accessible and compliant with regulations. Every 18 months, the committee would submit a report to the secretary that would address barriers of access, compliance with the accessibility law, and priorities for accessibility through department procedure and practice as well as new legislation, among other duties. This ensures that the committee would have a broad scope of knowledge and be able to advise on all areas concerning disability access.
In an ideal world, VA and all public-facing institutions would be made accessible at their inception and continuity of access would be among their top priorities. Unfortunately, this has not occurred, and it appears that VA requires more active involvement to fix a broken system that does not serve those it was meant to serve. We do not doubt VA's commitment to helping veterans and their families, but we do doubt the course they have chosen to do so. We are not alone in this opinion, having been supported by other VSOs. BVA will be pushing a one-click campaign soon. If you would like to support BVA's efforts by educating members of Congress about the vital nature of this proposed legislation that would establish this committee, please check our weekly BVA happenings and tell others to contact their members of Congress once we begin the campaign.